Hey guys, it is Coach AP coming at you through the video scope here in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. And today we're going to be talking about the central impact of the NL Under-18 Major Hockey League. Let's rewind the clock to this time last season. And I had Central pegged as a contender in the NL League. However, they showed those signs of being young and inconsistent. They had a great Monctonian. They were 2-0 in day one. They beat OHA. They beat RNS. But then overall, as a young team, they showed some inconsistencies. They finished fourth and they got knocked out by the eventual league champion Growlers in the first round. Fast forward to a year later, new head coach on the bench. You have Brian Casey behind the bench replacing brother Glenn, who is in a more of a managerial role, who did a great job with that program. Brian comes in with a wealth of coaching experience, junior A, college, you name it, and has an even brighter playing resume, which has garnered him a Hockey Newfoundland Labrador Hall of Fame selection this past year. So congratulations, Brian, that is an awesome award for you. Coming back on the back end, you've got Tyrell Mulrooney, who I think could contend as the number one defenseman in the league this year. I know you got Mason Daw, you've got Liam Hodder, you've got Cross, you've got some guys there that are real strong. However, I think this is a guy that could definitely challenge to be in the mix to be one of the best in the NL Under-18 League. Joey Green returns. He didn't play a ton last year because they had some veteran guys like Carter Bound there, but Joey Green, going to be thrust in to play more minutes this year. You've got Ian Wall coming back from prep school. That is a huge add for Brian Casey's crew. You've got a few young guys. James Strickland is an 07. Should be an interesting guy for some Q teams to take a look at. Well, I should say all teams to look at, but that's just the same. And we've got a mix of young guys like Joe Vardy. I don't really know Joe Vardy. Don't really know Paul Hughes. I don't know Sebastian Anstey all that well. But these are guys that they're all young, and I, having Brian there as a defense specialist, so to speak, he played D as a player, I think he's got a lot of experience in that position. I think that's gonna help those young guys, because playing D in under 18 is difficult for the first little while. You're you're coming up and playing in a level with guys that are sometimes two years older than you, so it's, it's definitely an adjustment. I think Brian will help with that adjustment. Up front, they do lose Adam Pinkson. Adam Pinkson goes on to Miramichi, to play for my buddy Rob McDonald up there on the river in the Maritime Hockey League with the T-Wolves. Best of luck to you, Adam. They lose Cash Corbett, and they lose a few guys that could be back this year. They lose Ryan Small to RNS, going to play for the Green and Blue, Jeff Lewis and crew. His sister went there, so that's the family connection there. A shout out to you, Alexi. Great job at h &L this year doing the support staff role. And Leo Adams, I don't know if he's coming back. He was in Amherst playing in junior A level. Last I checked, he was a high draft pick by the Rams. Maybe they keep him up. Maybe they send him somewhere local. I don't know. But if he's not there, that is a multi-position eligible player. That could be a stud this year. He could be a high high end point producer. He was a point of game guy last year, and I think he would take that next step in the league this year if he does return. I just don't know if he's returning. But you still have Adam Pinson, who is a great skater, a really good skater, strong on his skates. I think he's gonna be a good junior eight player in the future. You've got Grayson Purdy, who's a big, strong kid, who's gonna benefit from having some of those guys like the Corbett's and the Pinkson's gone. He's gonna have more minutes on his plate, and I think he's gonna be able to take it. He never takes a shift off that guy. He is always busting his butt out there. You've got Carter Lambert, sneaky top 10, top 15 offensive guy. He's very smart. He's got skill, he's got size. He's continuing to work on his skating. So that's an intriguing guy to mark down. He was in Grand Falls Junior A camp a couple of weeks ago, and I think that that was great for his development, for confidence, just to see that, okay, you know, I'm not far away from this level. I can play here someday. I think it's great to see some of these kids get the opportunities to play and try out for these Junior A teams, just to get a feel for what that level is like. You've got Alex Kellaway coming back from prep school. You've got Noah Harnett, who's the guy that was there last year, good 200-foot player who busts his butt all the time, kind of a similar player to party with that energy. You've got Sims coming back for a third season. Ethan Sims coming back. I think he's going to be a PP guy. He's a good skater. I think Brian can really mold him positionally. And I think he's got some attributes there that are going to catch Junior A team's eyes this year as an 05. You've got the Cannings. You've got guys like Hanrahan and Russell, Locke, Kosh. I don't really know them all that well, so I can't wait to actually go to a game, go to a game live and watch a few of those guys. Because I guarantee Brian's going to have them humming on all cylinders and give them a roll. 
whether they're offensive, the top six kind of minutes, or whether they're more of a PK specialist. Brian will put them into the role that best suits their game. Very knowledgeable hockey guy is Brian. And let's not forget those goalies. You've got Mitchell Din. He is a big loss to this team. Saw a lot of rubber the past two seasons. He has graduated from that program. Best of luck to you in your future endeavors, Mitchell. But they still have Adam Hedges coming back. He was there last season. I think he's ready to run with this starting job and really just take it as far as he can. He is passionate. He's on the ice on a regular basis. He's a guy that really, really cares and wants to, to take that job and really run with it and do something with it and continue with his hockey career. You've got Logan Colburn coming in to challenge him. He is a young guy. I don't know a whole lot about him, so another guy that I get to watch this year that I'm excited to see, Central do have a lot of 07s coming into their program, which I think is very, very important in the development of this, not only this team, but the development of the league as a whole. So that's it for me for my Central preview. I don't know as much about this team as I do about some of the city teams or about as much as I do with TriPen, but I still think that this team has a great future. And you saw that in this past weekend with 3 0 and 1 finish. You take the numbers, they only gave up 11 goals this past weekend. So you extrapolate that across the 32 game schedule. That's a big word here today. And they're only giving up 88 goals. They gave up 151 goals last year. That would cut their goals against in half. And that was their big bugaboo last season. But I think if they clean that up, they are going to be a contender. Now, I feel like I've been saying that about Central for the past little while. Prove me right, Central. Be a contender. Come on. Come on, man. So anyway, this is it for this video. I am gone. I am Coach AP. If you want to watch any of the videos that we have previously done, the Growlers video is in the description below. There's a link there, and so is the TriPan video. So we will do videos on every single team in the league. But in exchange, can you please like and subscribe to the channel? Like the videos. It also helps really expand the reach of the videos so maybe some scouts can take a look at it. We're always wanting that exposure here on The Rock in Newfoundland. And I'm um, gone.